In this video, we're going to look at the uh, PNP, Bipolar Junction Transistor, wired as a switch. And so, the PNP, Bipolar Junction, is uh, practically the same as an NPN, except for their chemistries are opposite. So, use them the same way, but with opposite currents and voltages. And so, you can see with the emitter here, for the NPN, Bipolar Junction Transistor, on the schematic symbol, the uh, emitter arrow is not pointing in. That's one way to think of NPN, whereas the PNP transistor is pointing in. And so the emitter could be down here. It would still be pointing in towards the uh, base. So you can uh, swirl this or flip it however you want to fit a schematic. And usually, though, you'll see it in this form, where the emitter is on top. And uh, when it comes to the PNP, bipolar junction transistor, Whereas the NPN bipolar junction transistor, the emitter is usually at the bottom. So, other than uh, the chemistry being opposite and schematic symbols being slightly different, they work in the same way. So, when we look at the switch circuit, the switch circuit is practically the same, except for we had the load on the more positive side and the emitter on the more negative side and we gave an opposite signal we gave the power supply voltage to the base whereas now the way we're looking at it now we're going to stick with ground being the zero volt reference point and everything being a positive voltage above it you could flip this around you could put ground there and have a negative voltage right there and uh, so that's getting a little more complicated though so I'm going to keep this video simple we're going to stick with the common positive uh, power supply in relationship to ground when it comes to a single supply of uh, power so in any case there you have it pretty simple there we're turning the LED on and off now I'm using a mechanical switch of course we can just power the LED directly from a mechanical switch but when it comes to the transistor it's taking a weak signal. This is a 10,000 ohm resistor right here. We may get an electrical signal from something else that is not strong enough to power an LED. And I'm also falsely triggering it. As you can see, my body's not giving it as much current as the uh, switch would, but it's giving it a little bit. And uh, sometimes it's going the opposite direction too. So in any case, the uh, we're giving a weak signal to the transistor. So it's taking that signal and given an amplified amount of current based on the uh, gain. And for a switch, you want to go into saturation. So we covered that in the last video, and uh, we're going to kind of cover it again, but when it comes to the PNP transistor. So I'm going to take this apart really quick, and we will build it up step by step. So to begin with, the transistor itself, we have it here, 2N3906. So I already put the pin layout right there and it's the same it has a 2n at the beginning so just like the 2n3904 which is the npn version of the 2n3906 they're made basically the same except for opposite chemistries when it comes to uh, p type material and n type material so we could also just throw this into a transistor tester right there and just hit test. We'll get the pin layout. So flat side is facing us. You can see one, two, and three right there. And uh, so you don't want to connect two different pins into the same number. And uh, so there you can see pin number three there is the collector. Pin number two is the base. And uh, pin number one is the emitter. And that is what we have right there when you use that pin layout format. So now the emitter of the NPN bipolar junction transistor when you're going to use it as, as a switch goes directly to the positive rail so the top pin there I have an orange jumper right there we will put that directly to the positive rail right there and uh, before we do the load let's do the uh, switch right here and so you can see here we got the switch and a resistor so again you don't need much uh, current in fact the current's going to go this way that's uh, more negative now but uh, you need at least 0 0.7 volts to get current flowing. After that 0 0.7 volts, whatever voltage is left over, once you close the switch, will go across the resistor. And we can use very, very low current. So I'm just going to use a 10 kilo ohm resistor. And I'm going to tuck it back here so it's a little more out of the uh, view there. 
so we can see what's going on a little easier. So there we have that right there. And we can zoom in a little bit more. So that's going to the base, the middle pin of the transistor. That's how you control how well the transistor conducts. So the switch is separated top to bottom, but the uh, bottom is connected to each other and the top are connected to each other. So if I close this switch, that pin will connect to that pin as well as uh, that pin. So now for the load, usually you see a resistor before an LED on schematics or whatnot. Actual order does not matter. And if you make something though that a lot of people are going to see, you'll probably still want to put the resistor before the LED. But LEDs don't jump uh, gaps near as well as resistors. So long lead the anode towards the more positive side, short lead the cathode towards the more negative side. Right there. And now we're, since I'm only using 5 volts right now at the rail, I'm going to use a 220 ohm resistor to protect the LED. So it goes to the cathode and then to the negative rail right there and uh, we are done pretty straightforward right there as you can see here I am using 5 volts right now and we can look at how much current is being uh, used up by the circuit so about nothing now which makes sense the LEDs off I press the button now it's about 13 milliamps approximately this is usually one or two milliamps off but pretty pretty close and uh, so a milliamp is one thousandth of an amp so as you can see there, if we got 1 milliamp, it would take 10, 100, 1,000 to equal 1 amp. Right there. Uh, basic math. So, we are using, as I said, the 2N3906 because we are lighting an LED. And so, we can get the collector 200 milliamps of current. And you may see a negative symbol before the 200 milliamps right here when you're looking at a data sheet to indicate that current is going the opposite direction of an NPN transistor basically and uh, uh, so that's actually the collector current right there and uh, so collector current we can handle up to about 200 milliamps remember though that it's the source of current coming out of it so that kind of makes sense but you may see negative 200 right there main thing to, to know is that it's 200 milliamps of current and a total device power of 625 milliwatts. So the uh, 2N2907, in the last video, we looked at the 2N2222, and there really is no, this is a PMP version of the NPN 2N3904. There really is no exact PNP version of the 2N2222. But uh, this is close, it has about the same properties. As you can see here, it can also handle a collector current of 600 milliamps. Of course, it's going in the opposite direction of the 2N2222. And I also can handle the same power rating of a 2N2222 and 2N3906. And that's mostly probably because of the size and material. It's a TO92 package for uh, all four of those uh, transistors I was just talking about. And they all got the same pin layout. So now, I do have power transistors. For the PNP, so I showed the NPN version in the last video. I got this from a Joe Knows Electronics uh, semiconductor kit. I don't think that's going to show up too well right there. And uh, I have that linked in the store that I put in uh, my kind of a storefront. I show Amazon products I like, and uh, you can click them. And uh, so I include the kit on there. But in case you can see, there's a little metal back in there. Helps dissipate the heat a bit. It's a slightly larger component, but also you can attach a heat sink. And if you have the right heat sink, you can expect up to 3 amps of current from a collector to a ground. And then up to 12.5 watts of the uh, total device power dissipation right there. Pin layout is different though, according to the data sheet. Again, emitter is the left pin, but then the collector and base switch spots. Collector 2, base uh, 3, right there. So, in any case, that is really about all you need to know. If you understand the PNP transistor, the uh, or the NPN transistor, which is the first one, generally everybody learns. You don't have to, but uh, that's usually the order you learn them. And so that's the order that I covered them. And you can see here that uh, I didn't change these rules when it came from the NPN. If you know the gain 
it's probably somewhere between 200 and 300 for this transistor it changes with how warm it gets and uh, voltages you use and whatnot but it's probably in the 200 to 300 range so with a gain of 100 if you give the base 1 milliamp of current you can expect 100 milliamps so you want to give the base you know probably 100 or 200 the uh, current that you need from the rest of the load and so as long as you go overboard you will get what is called saturation the transistor will conduct as well as it can and uh, if you don't give it any current you cut the voltage below 0.7 uh, volts in this case uh, it's, it's kind of opposite but uh, in any case as, as long as you don't uh, give the uh, base to emitter uh, voltage enough to get it to conduct you'll have a cut off it'll be off like it is now and now it's saturated the LED is fully lit it is the resistor that is setting the current not the transistor transistor is giving it as much as it will already limit to so you can see the LED is not as bright with a one kilo ohm resistor the uh, load is independent of what the transistor is doing now you'll see it is quite a bit brighter and uh, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to swap out the 220 ohm resistor for a 510 ohm resistor because we're going to boost the voltage to 10 volts like we did in the last video and do the exact same thing so you can take a capacitor and so it won't turn on and off right away plus it will drift over time we'll look at that so we got the capacitor it's a good idea to make sure it's discharged if you have uh, like 10 or more volts across there you'll probably see a spark the more voltage a bigger spark and the uh, more charge the larger the capacitance the uh, bigger the spark too for a given voltage so only do that with lower value capacitors and uh, only if you're pretty sure it's not terribly high voltage otherwise use a resistor to uh, discharge it but it's a good idea to discharge it before you add it to a circuit so here you can see we're going to put the positive side of the capacitor to the positive side of the power supply and then the uh, negative side where the 10 kilo ohm and the switch connect and there you can see I wrote the value for that resistor 510 also on this schematic you can see the resistor comes before the LED but they're in series as long as the LED is the right way anode positive cathode negative it will conduct the same whether the resistor is there or there and uh, so make sure we get it to the positive rail and then we connect where the switch and the resistor connect so now I hold the button it's working exactly the same we just turned it on the LED turned on the capacitor however instantly charged and uh, so we got positive there and the negative there it charged now I let go now the capacitor is discharging and uh, you can see the arrow is pointing the current direction right there it is discharging as long as currents flowing through there then it will allow current flow through there as long as it's enough current to keep it saturated the LED will be fully on but once the current gets low enough depending on its gain the load will have less current but the main takeaway is it fades so we could use a higher value uh, capacitor it would extend the time that all of this takes but uh, it's an interesting addition people seem to like I made a, a couple uh, fade away videos before they seem to get more than an average view so I figured I would add that on to here to help demonstrate this a little bit more and so now remember the uh, base 2 emitter has a diode drop so you can get the full voltage from collector to uh, collector down here to emitter you can get the full voltage applied from the power supply across the load if you have enough current going from a base to emitter or emitter to base however you're looking at it at any given moment but uh, now you're going to see that uh, the LED is practically off I'm guessing this capacitor right now is charged to about 0.6 volts and, uh, and I don't know why we're not getting there we go so a little less than 0.6 volts right now and it might drift down a little bit more uh, but uh, in any case there's still a little bit of current flows and stuff that kind of throws things off but anyways you need 
about uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts before the capacitor or the uh, transistor will start conducting uh, base to emitter, emitter to base, however you want to look at it. So, in any case, I'm going to wrap it up there. And so, of course, study these in more detail. The main takeaway, though, is usually you learn about NPN bipolar junction transistors. This is the PNP. The PNP just works opposite. So this is the same circuit that I showed, except for I had to flip the LED around and switch the side that the capacitor goes on. Make, remember, it's polarized. And uh, the way to make sure that side's always more positive than that side is to put it directly to the positive rail there or to put that directly to the negative rail there. But in this circuit, we cannot put this to the negative rail. Let's make sure it is completely discharged because you're going to see that uh, the LED never turns off. And I think that's because there's some current leaking through the uh, capacitor because it's not perfect. And uh, so it's going to keep, we got a more negative voltage there. And uh, now it's fading off more than it did before. But uh, I think we're going to always have that slight glow there. That slight glow is not staying there when we had it positive. So in any case, just remember, polarities switch when you go from uh, NPN to PNP. Otherwise, they work the same. So hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.